This short presentation introduces the concept of stressed VAR using components from the corresponding e-learning module found under Optimal MRM's online training service. The genesis of stressed VAR can be traced to the period between 2007 and 2008 when the world experienced what is known today as the Global Financial Crisis, or GFC. Stressed VAR grew out of this crisis as an added regulatory requirement applicable mostly to banks. The losses that banks in particular had experienced during this period of financial market stress far exceeded the minimum capital that regulatory bodies required banks to hold against traded market risks. Up to 2007, regulatory capital associated with trading risk exposure was tied primarily to a bank's simple VAR measure. The following graph uses a combination of actual historical and hypothetical daily changes in the S&P 500 index. The left axis represents the level of the S&P 500 price index. The right axis represents the value at risk that is associated with a hypothetical investment position in the index. The first VAR point appears two years into the data series, since each VAR point is based on the preceding two years worth of history. During the period when the S&P 500 index is experiencing relatively low volatility, VAR is equally relatively subdued. As volatility begins to pick up with the beginning of the sell-off in the S&P 500, as had happened in 2007, VAR also begins to rise, but appears to lag significantly. It peaks only by the time the index has reached the bottom, and appears to have stabilized somewhat. As market volatility eventually subsides, VAR remains elevated because it continues to reflect the previous two years' worth of history. In the same way that VAR lagged the previous rise in the S&P 500 volatility, it now also lags the drop in volatility up until the corresponding data set begins to fall out of the two-year historical period used. As such, regulators came to view VAR as an unreliable measure to use in isolation as a basis for setting capital requirements and sought to correct this weakness by introducing a stressed VAR measure. Although bank losses during the global financial crisis were largely related to derivative counterparty and traded credit risk exposure, which are in part captured in VAR, the Bank of International Settlements, or BIS, seized upon this crisis to usher in a new set of regulatory capital requirements. These new requirements included incremental risk charge, credit valuation adjustment, and stressed VAR. The intent of these additional exposure measurement requirements was to raise the amount of capital that banks were required to hold going forward. The general guidelines provided are that the stressed VAR measure should be based on a 10-day holding period at a 99% confidence level and calculated at least weekly. Model risk factor inputs are to be derived from historical data over a continuous 12-month period of significant financial stress as relevant to the bank's portfolio. Risk factors under stressed market conditions are to be calibrated at least once a year. Although the associated global financial crisis is considered to have started around August 2007 when the failures of Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers began to emerge, the crisis appears to have spread to the broader market approximately six months later in February 2008. A similar pattern is seen for five-year U.S. swap spreads as a proxy for all U.S. swap spreads. Triple B corporate bond spreads versus swap rates and the changes of implied volatility of the S&P 500 index. A qualitative visual review of the historical data set suggests that on average, the appropriate 12 months period of continuous stress begins in March 2008 and ends in March 2009. Stressed VAR is a natural extension of VAR. Hence, it is intuitive to build on an existing VAR framework to develop stressed VAR. Regulators do not prescribe a particular type of measurement model to use. Banks are free to use models based, for example, on a variance-covariance or parametric method, an historical simulation, and a Monte Carlo simulation. In a 12-month stress period, as prescribed by regulation, there are only 26 consecutive 10-day intervals if we assume 260 trading days in a year. As such, 
it may be impractical to model a 10-day VAR directly from an historical one-year window. A more practical approach is to simply scale higher a one-day VAR measure by the square root of time. We can change the holding period to 10 days in order to scale the one-day VAR results to a stressed VAR measure. In the variance covariance model, the one-day VAR result can be scaled higher by the square root of 10 to represent stressed VAR. In the historical simulation model, the one-day VAR result can also be scaled higher by the square root of 10 to represent stressed VAR. If using a Monte Carlo simulation, there is no need to scale the one-day VAR number higher because the random simulation generates one-day and 10-day changes, which are used subsequently to calculate VAR and stressed VAR directly. Basel 2.5 requires banks to calculate two VAR measures. One is the usual VAR, and the other is stressed VAR. The two VAR measures are combined to calculate a total capital charge, where VAR and SVAR represent the 1-day 99% VAR and 10-day 99% stressed VAR respectively. VAR small average and SVAR small average represent the average VAR and stressed VAR calculated over the previous 60 days, and M small c and M small s represent multipliers that are determined by local bank supervisors and which have a minimum value of 3. Optimal MRM invites you to visit its store online to learn more about this and other available market risk e-learning modules.